safety, I'll be out of this place. And you believe me, I'm coming back to you to correct certain things. It seemed to me like this was the true north, the focal point of Paul's ministry. He was not as interested in fame. He was not as interested in visiting many churches. His desire, this bar, was what was before him. To produce in ordinary men the fullness of God and he deployed every and all creativity whether it was letter whether it was a conference to settle their understanding whether it was training and mentorship of others the goal was to be able to produce in all believers the fullness of God who is understanding so far so that number one we are co-laborers with God many know that but um the challenge, especially for ministers of the gospel, is that we do not even understand the reference, the bar. So everyone is sincerely doing what he hopes to do. And so if you ask an average pastor, what exactly are you trying to produce? He tells you, I'm preaching the gospel. And he's being sincere. Or he says, I'm raising a people. And so for a long time, you would find members loyal but not becoming anything. They do not even have an idea of what they should become. Depending on who preaches, depending on who comes to the altar, or depending on the spiritual thoughts that are a trend. The people are like an amoeba, you know, you know that creature called an amoeba. They, they become anything. There is no form, there is no fashion. There is no intention in building the people. The programs that constitute the sermons are largely freelance as a result of what is in vogue per time, per season very dangerous unfortunately you see the kind and the quality of believers that are produced in any territory are a reflection of the spiritual intelligence of the leaders that built them you literally can sample a people and use them as a report card to assess the level of understanding and the level of intelligence of the leaders that have molded them are we together so we are exploring a few things and I'm saying that there is a standard. Please say there is a standard. Say it again, there is a standard. And that the standard is called the fullness of God. The fullness of God. The fullness of God. The third thing I want you to know is found in 1 Corinthians now chapter 3 where we got our text. It's a long read and please be patient. I'll start from verse 1 verse 1 so that we'll put everything in context. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. And I brethren I could not speak to you as unto spiritual he says but as unto carnal even as babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat for he that told you were not able to bear it neither yet can ye are ye now able to bear it. He was saying, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envies and strife, listen carefully now, divisions. He says, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Verse 4, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Follow the discussion now. Who then is Paul? He says, and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Verse 6 now, I have planted, he says, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Let's stop here for a moment. Who gives increase? There is no technology invented by the wisdom of man that sustains the ability to bring increase in ministry if God does not help men. I can tell you this. And we need to be careful because in deploying all kinds of ways, whether for church growth and the rest, and I respect all of those things, some of them have been tested scientifically. Unfortunately, men are not animals. God gave them a will. And if God does not touch the heart of a man, there are times you can go to the sea like Peter. Your boat is correct. Your net is correct. The, the sea is where you will fish and yet you will not catch fish. And there is no explanation at all. It's not incompetence. There is a God factor in this business of ministry. Only the size of God. You can't use brain work. There, there is a place for principles and diligence. But I can tell you, there is a signature that only the hand of God can write. And it's important we put this at the back of our minds. 
Paul planted. Please, let's go back to the scripture. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. God is giving someone increase. Increase in life, increase in ministry in the name of Jesus. Next verse, please, very quickly. So neither then is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Verse 8. Verse 8 now. Okay. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward. Listen. According to his own labor. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. I established that already. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Verse 10. It says, according to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builded thereon. It says, but let every man take heed how he builded thereon. Verse 11. For other foundation can, can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12, we'll stop at 13. Now, listen please. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, so whatever you build upon it is what determines the basis of your reward. Christ is the cornerstone, but it says there are all kinds of things that can be built on that foundation. Please leave it for us. Gold, silver precious stones wood hay and then um stubble let me do 13 now it says every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work what sort it is who is understanding so far that a time is going to come in ministry where your work will be tried by fire and it will reveal it's, it's not something you can hide it will tell us the quality of the investment you have been making christ is the foundation of everything are we together but that the quality of what your ministry becomes, please listen, is whatever you add to that cornerstone. That some can add gold, some can add silver, some can add wood, some can add hay. And that eventually, fire will come and try the quality of what you have built. Are we together now? So when you find out that there are people who don't seem to have longevity of impact... It's not always a demonic attack. It's just that there are times and seasons within the span of their work, ministry, where their works are tried and they would have been found wanting. And let me tell you the truth. It is not only Satan that takes. According to the parable of the talent, God also collects from inefficiency and adds to efficiency. It is how the economy of heaven works. So verify who took what you lost so that you don't bind and cast in ignorance. There are times that it is God himself for his name's sake. Is it not in your Bible? He gave unto one five, he gave two, he gave one. He gave to all of them. But what they added on what he gave was what he judged them based on. This is what Paul is saying. That Christ is that cornerstone. But whatever you add on that building, a day will come, fire will come to test it. The kind of people you have raised. Are we together now? And I can tell you sincerely, this is a pastor's conference, so I'm, I'm at liberty to say a few things. Many of us need to go back and re-examine whether the kind of work we are doing will have longevity. We are celebrating 30 years. I hope you know that 30 years old, anything is old enough. A 30 year old fool needs a miracle. He doesn't need prayer. He needs a miracle, a complete miracle. If you are 30 years and you have been working in wisdom, you have gained some experience. Am I right on that? Yes. Longevity. There is a way I wrote here God designed that men be built. Please listen. Please listen. Please listen. Dear laborers in the gospel, there is a way that God designed that men be built there is a way that men need 
to be built in order to be matured and useful vessels. This must be every minister's approach in raising men. Now listen, the degree of compliance to that model is what makes a man of God a wise master builder or otherwise. When you are called a wise master builder, it is with reference to the degree of compliance to that model. Are we together? Now, there are many estates in Lagos. And how many of you know, some of you are in real estate here, I believe. When you carve out an acre of land or some acres of land, you earmark them to be built. And many times, some estates insist on uniformity of buildings. Am I right? You buy the land, you are, but you are not given the liberty to build what you want. The condition is that you can buy your land, use whatever engineer, but you have to receive the architecture from the owners of the estate. So you can find five buildings looking the same, but built by different engineers. What brought the consistency of results is not the engineer, it's compliance to the architecture. That means I should see a believer in Lagos, in Kaduna, in Ghana, and the difference should not be too wide. The variety and species of believers we are raising tell the degree of compliance or deviation to that pattern this is what God is helping us understand are we together that the same way you can see a a professor of medicine from say Maiduguri meeting with a professor of medicine in Lagos meeting with a professor of medicine in Johannesburg they can meet for the first time and nobody would doubt one another because there was a system that standardized their practice they literally can meet for the first time in the theater and nobody is doubting another person's proficiency. How come when you see a believer A, believer B, you are still not sure? It tells you that another kind of architecture that may not be part of the blueprint is what is being deployed. Do you understand this? It's not about being good or bad. It's about compliance to the standard. No wonder... We have a lot of activities that happen weekday, week in, but we do not find that conformity to that standard called the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Who is understanding? This is true. This is true. This is true. If I see a believer who is part of the covenant nation faithfully, genuinely connected, whether here or in the island or any other expression, even from an organizational standpoint, I expect a similarity in belief systems. Some things should not shock you. Are we together now? If it does, it becomes an embarrassment to the investment of your pastor on you. Either you are a, we call it in civil service, ghost worker. So they are there, but they are not really there. You, 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 you understand? You know what I'm talking about? There are people who are in the payroll, but they never show up. Nobody knows who they are. This has been a bother for me for a very long time. The kind and the quality of believers. And sometimes we spiritualize our architecture. It is still wrong. There is a standard. An intelligent God will not design a program and leave it to the personal creativity of people. No, there is a place for creativity. But you see, when you walk with God, creativity is not needed. It's when you are manifesting as a king that creativity becomes required. Are we together? There is a standard, there is a reference. Your call is alignment and obedience. There is a, there is a pathway that if you pass any believer from a non-believer to a believer, there is a guarantee that that believer will have a minimum standard of excellence as far as reflecting the Christ is concerned. And I'm not just going to leave you in limbo. I want to show you the, the coordinates that the Bible calls the fullness of Christ. The fullness of God. So that you use this to benchmark the kinds of sermons. You know, sir, as God helps me in ministry and as I grow, I'm learning again that if we do not become intentional about raising people, and sometimes spiritualize you know once someone spiritualizes an idea no matter how wrong it is there's no 
except you are a spiritual man, it becomes difficult to judge to say, look, this thing, the person himself can be in delusion because the error came from the realm of the spirit does not make it correct. Are we together now? There is a way God designed that men be built. You become a wise master builder to the degree to which you understand that blueprint, that architecture, and you submit yourself to it as you build God's people. Remember the goal is that the fullness of God as revealed in Christ be expressed in the people. Now it's a theological expression. In theology we call it the reflection principle. The reflection principle is a principle by which um, you find a parallel and an image reflects an object. Are we together? You find that even in geography, the sun and the moon. How many of you know that depending on the level of the alignment of the moon, the shape it gives from the sky is not the same. There are times we call it full moon. Is that true? There are times it looks like it's almost there. In fact, many religions use that those alignments to even decide seasons. That's how many believers are. You can see a believer barely there. And the problem is not the sun. The problem is how you found yourself there. Are we together now? Yes. The reflection principle. There are so many believers who when you look at their lives, they do not sell the idea of God in a way that the nations should desire. They are such a disturbing misrepresentation of God. And sometimes it has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is largely a product of the kind and the quality of mentorship. Listen, I want you to thank God if you are, if you are truly a member of this church. And I'm saying it not because I'm on stage here. Um, when God really wants to show you mercy, he shortens the distance between you and a teaching priest. So we have two believers here saved on the same day. But for the one, he had the opportunity to be planted in a church under a teaching priest. And for the other, it was so unfortunate. He freelanced his way. And you draw those people after five years, you will see the difference. The difference is not the Holy Spirit. No. Are we together now? The difference, I hope you know that the moment you get saved, maybe I should run this progression with you. I hope I'm not boring you. That when a non-believer becomes a believer, so this is the pathway. When an unbeliever becomes a believer, and I hope you know how that happens. There are many pastors who don't know how unbelievers become believers. It's not an impartation. Mm -mm. And it is not everything about Jesus that translates to salvation of your soul. I hope you know. Mm. There is an exact body of truth about Jesus you must believe to be saved. 